If you've ever had your garage broken into and your friend's motorcycle stolen, you may want to get a security system. I currently live in an apartment complex and here we've been getting catalytic converter thieves, package thieves, car break-ins, random homeless people walking into your garage, my garage. <laughs> Nothing, can you please get out of my garage? You're welcome. Which is why I want to protect my cars, my home, my garage with this security system, which records 24 seven because you have your own NBR, unlike this Amazon Blink, which only records movement and not pay the $10 fee that comes with this unit. Yes, they sent me over this system and I will be going over the pros and the cons, it's gonna be an honest review. And this will be different from the other security system reviews because I will be connecting two cameras into one wire and be wiring it throughout my house in a pretty clean way. That's why we're here. Let's go ahead and unbox it. In the box, we have the manual for 60 foot Cat5e cables, the power cable, the power brick, the mouse to connect to the NVR, a LAN cable, and now we get to the good stuff. There are four of these PoE 4K cameras. The entire housing is made out of metal, which gives it a PI rating of 66, and the camera gives it a 110 viewing angle. PoE means power over ethernet. For whatever reason, like one I'm gonna show later, and you need to have external power, you can do so with this cable. And finally, hidden underneath the cameras is the NVR, where all the magic happens. This particular unit is an eight channel unit with two terabytes of memory. That's what those eight ethernet parts are. It has two USB parts, HDMI part, an audio part, VA part, the LAN to connect to the router, and finally the power. For me, the biggest roadblock of installing my own DIY security system that's not connected to Wi-Fi and you know monthly fees is the idea of connecting it through ethernet. If you're living in an apartment like me, you'll think, oh, I can't do that. But you really can. And it's really not that hard. So here we are in my closet and they're all wired up. And let me go ahead and go through on how I did that. So I will be using a 256AB orientation because that's what the other side of this plug is. So you wanna match plug to plug. And the way you can tell is by simply looking at it and you can see the different colors. The last color is brown, the first color is orange, yada yada, and there you go, same thing. This tool will do everything you need to wire up a ethernet cable. It has a spot right there that you wanna fish the wire through. You wanna give yourself an ample amount of extra wire in case you mess up. Go right past the last clip and you just wanna twist. I didn't make it all the way to the back, so make sure you twist all the way around. But either way, you can just pull this right off. Now we have all these colors. It looks intimidating at first, but it's really not that bad. So the first step is to go ahead and unravel them. And as you unravel them, you want to straighten them out so they don't ravel back up. There you go. Now the next step is to arrange these wires to the diagram. So striped orange will be over here. Solid orange will be right next to it. Hold it as you go. Then we have striped green, blue for number four. Then we have striped blue for five, solid green, striped brown, then finally brown. Now we have it in this orientation, you want to also, once again, try to straighten it out. Let's double check that the colors are in the right order. We are looking good. Now, if we turn this tool around, you'll see this razor blade. That is to cut these wires because it has a spot in there that will catch the ends of the wire. There you go. And just like that, it's all caught in the tool. Now we want to grab this sucker. You want the tab facing downwards and away from you. You want to slide these in into their own grooves. Each wire has their own individual groove. All right, push it all the way to the end. Let's double check the colors. And I got the color wrong. If they're not as straight as you like, go ahead and just bend them up a little bit then re-straighten them. So we got brown, striped brown, green, striped blue, blue, striped green, solid orange, and striped orange. Okay, that looks good. Push it all the way down. If you see these slots, we have a spot for the RJ45 and I think the RJ11. Go ahead and slide the RJ45 in with this tab facing upwards, just like so. Slide in, then all you gotta do is squeeze. 
And now we have an RJ45 connector. If you see these tabs, they're poking out. And now they're all pressed in. So this tool uses that to push the tabs in. Now let's double check our work. So this device can do two things. It can make sure the cable is wired up correctly and if there's any issues throughout the wire. Then it can also trace or track a wire, which is pretty cool. But let's go ahead and test the wire. So put it in the RJ45 spot. Do the same with this side. Now we slide this to test. This will go through one through eight no matter what. Paying attention to this one. It needs to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it is, so we are good and connected. The scanning I'm talking about is, is this. Pretty nifty. So step one is to figure out which Ethernet outlet you want to use. Plug in the Ethernet tester, slide up to scan, bring the tracker to the control box, turn it on and start tracing the wires. The noise will start to get louder as you get closer to the correct wire. And as you can see, I found it and just to double checked, I separated from all the rest of the wires and then I did the test again, redundancy. Go ahead and label the wire. For me, it's top kitchen. Before you start wiring up the cable like me and make a mistake like I did, look up the diagram and figure out which RJ45 orientation you might have in your house. I automatically wired for this one and this is what happened. To test to see if you wired it all correctly, go ahead and slide the tester down to test, plug in the tracker and watch your numbers go. As you can see, it's not going through one through eight as it should, as I previously stated, and instead is skipping numbers. So I went ahead and removed the ethernet wall plate and check the keystone jack. Now within that jack, you can see numbers and colors, and you can follow the numbers to the color of the wire. So if I were to check at the very beginning, I would have knew that I am a T56AA wiring diagram and not the T56B. So I wired this for A and we we're good to go. So I went ahead and wired up the three wires, and yes, three wires for four cameras, and I'll explain more about that later but I ran into a snag on the last wire. As you can see, it's skipping five and eight. So I kind of was confident that wasn't my fault. So I decided to take off um, this face plate and it turned out that this on both sides was not pushed in all the way. This needs to be pushed in all the way because this plastic piece pushes these wires into a piece of metal that makes contact with these pins inside of here. And of course you want to double check and I was right. So I decided to set up the NVR in my office. This is not this permanent location, but I just decided to set up an office for whatever reason. Anyways, go ahead and plug in the HDMI or VGA cable into your monitor, plug in the mouse and plug in the power. The NVR should automatically turn on and boot up. Go ahead and select your language and press OK. The initial setup admin password will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now go ahead and create your own password and you do need to have a strong password in order to progress to the next screen. Now set your pattern password, which you'll be using quite often with the NVR. So don't forget either passwords, set your time zones, go ahead and enable DHCP. Now let's go ahead and scan that QR code with your iPhone, Android, or whatever you have. Plug in the ethernet or LAN cable, open up the app that the QR code sent you to, which is guard viewer. Go ahead and sign your life away. Go ahead and create an account and the verification code will be sent to your email. I found mine in my junk mail. Now to connect the NVR to the app, you need to press the three lines on the top left screen of the app, select devices, press add, then press scan, press okay. Now you gotta go ahead and flip the modem over and there'll be a QR code on the back of that modem and scan that QR code. Sorry for the terrible view. And now we can start live view. Of course, we won't see anything until we install the camera. So let's go ahead and install the cameras. With all these now wired up, I have two wired up to the kitchen and one wired up to uh, my dining room. And in a minute, I'm going to show you exactly how I connected two cameras to one cable with the PoE system. So this is where the NVR is going to lay for the rest of the time I live in this house or apartment. So now we need to set up each camera before we mount it to make sure we're going to be putting it in the you know, spot we're happy with. We want to go ahead and go to menu. Select a camera location that has not been used yet. I know this is used, but this is where I want the camera to be at. Go ahead and press manual. Select this one. Okay, exit. 
now the camera is online. And now with this configured on the NVR, we can go to our phone, the app, go to live view, and we can add that camera to our live view. Immediately, I was pretty impressed with the quality of the image and the latency of the recording. Take your time, find the best spot because you are gonna drill holes into the side of this building. And for me, that's a pretty good spot and I can track any homeless person that decides to walk behind there. You can wrap everything in the bottom of this and have just the cord stick out. Let me explain the mounting just a bit further. The plate twists off the back of the camera. So in order to install it, you got to twist the camera onto the plate after it's mounted onto the wall. Then once it's twisted, the whole base of the camera can twist 360 degrees. But on top of that, the ball of the camera can also rotate up and down and left and right. The flexibility and range of motion of this camera is pretty great. We're using these guys to uh, organize the wire going all the way left, then straight down then back into the house. We live in an apartment complex and we cannot shove the wires behind the wall or drill holes to shove wires behind the wall. It's not something we can do here. And most likely a lot of y'all are in the same boat. That is loud. <laughs> I just need to shorten this wire. Honestly, that reconnects pretty quick. Each camera has one of these weather protectors. Since this camera is outside, we're gonna install it. First, we need to unplug the cable. Then we need to grab this piece and have the threaded insert facing towards the RJ45 connector. Grab the split bushing, and if it's not split, just squeeze it. Install that onto the cable. Now slide on the sleeve. Install the O-ring on the camera side ethernet cable. And connect the RJ45. Turn this, tie in that. The gasket will screw on down. And you squeeze it in between this kind of claw looking thing. And you see the claw widening out. And you just tie in this and you're good. Now it's time for the fun part. We are going to have two security cameras in this garage essentially. Well, one on the outside and one right there. One camera is gonna go on the other side of this. Then we're gonna have another camera about right there. That's two wires coming from the cameras and run just one wire all the way up the stairs and all the way to the NVR. So I did a lot of research and I found out this is one of the cheapest-ish ways to do that all while having decent products. So we have two cameras connected to a PoE splitter which will allow an external power to power the PoE device. And that is connected to this cord, which will run around the garage, which you plug the ethernet coming from the PoE into the PoE slot, then the LAN into the LAN slot. Then that comes out and connects to the RJ45 coupler. Since these are PoE power over the ethernet, one ethernet cable, which is what this cable would be, cannot power two devices, which is why we need these external power blocks and to keep things clean I just want one wire going through the house. So we have all the cameras wired up. The garage camera is wired up on the other side of this door coming down into the PoE splitter coming down and around all the way down this wall. I have it all displayed right now but it's going to go behind this cabinet. Then that Cat 5e is connected to the power supply and which is connected right here. It exits right here into a RJ45 coupler. And that camera is doing the exact same thing, coming down and around and connecting right there as well. From the RJ45 coupler, we have this cable coming out and around and all the way up through here, through the hallway, around this way. Can't really see it behind the fridge and underneath the cabinet, up and around and connected right there. There's a the front door camera, comes around, up, around, and it comes straight down and then is hidden with this wire connected to this top one. The outside camera is located right there, comes down, around, through this door behind here, then it connects right there. And now coming to my closet where all the magic happens. This is from the bottom ethernet cable in the kitchen, connects to the end of here, then we have two outputs on this RJ45 coupler that go straight into the modem, two separate plugs. And then we have the other two just connected here and underneath. And then 
here we are. I'm honestly very surprised on how clean other wiring looks, considering I had to wire it throughout the entire house. Not really noticeable. Pretty happy with that. I'm not going to keep the modem in here. I am going to just disconnect it, give it back to my wife, and just control the entire system with my phone. The monitor, I mean the monitor. Let's go ahead and go over some of the key features on this system, all the features that you need to know. This camera is obviously upside down. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of notifications from this spot right here. So just now, it notified me for this person walking. So we need to adjust human vehicle detection zones. Double tap, bottom left is the menu. Menu, go to alarm on bottom left. D4 is the camera we want to change. Oh, hang on. And we're gonna set the motion to just right here because I only want whoever's walking near my garage to notify me. And it just got a car going back here. So let's go ahead and change that zone. Press draw. And I just want right here. Press apply on the bottom and now set. And this is the only zone that I'll get notified for right here. Let's say you don't want the alarm to go off or it to notify you all the time. You can set different timing parameters right here and you can mess around with that and figure out what's best for you. And if someone decided to go through the garage while the camera's on night mode, it will illuminate its spotlight. Let's say you want the system to record for just motion. You can go down to storage and select the days and times that you want the camera to record. So if you want to change the window screen, you just press right here. You can press single or you can go on nine window. Um, we only have four cameras. Go on to playback. We want to play back this camera right here. If we zoom in right here. So this is with the new detection zone. So I'm not getting notified whenever these cars move, which is nice. So there you go. It was getting all these cars going by. I don't really need that notification. And of course you can do the same through the front door, play. Um, I had the front door on, on the 18th. So this is me setting it up. You can see all the vehicle detection zones, which is pretty cool. And just like that, everything looks pretty unsuspecting. I still need to clean up all this, but it looks pretty good. Let's say you don't like the spotlight and you want to turn it off. Go on your NVR, go underneath network and go to the IPv4. Copy that IP address, including the periods, then copy and paste it into the web browser on a computer that is connected through ethernet. It'll take you to this page and all you gotta do is write admin on the username and put in your Unremote system password. Then it'll take you to this page. Press setup, select cameras on the left drop down menu, Find the camera you want to turn the light off on, select access on the far right, input admin as the username, then password is 123456, go to configure, then change light mode to infrared only. Finally, press save. And now you're good to go. So when we first go on the app, we will go to live view. We will have to add the cameras from the NVR, which is already set up, so front door. Then we need to go to four cameras, Add the next one, garage. We can save this look by pressing the star button. I'm gonna call it my main visual output. Double tap each one to go back and forth. We can go right here and can go on device configuration. We can go on general detection and motion. I currently have it off because I'm in the garage, but if I want to be notified, I go ahead and click that on. I can set my detection zones Erase what you want to erase, add what you want to add, check mark. Now this will send me a notification. There you go. Now I got a notification. I can press watch. I think this is an important thing or important detail that I want to keep. Like, oh, that's important. I can zoom in here. I can press record, minimum three seconds. Okay, got it. Now the recording saved, I can press view here, but I'm just gonna go back, back, and go on pictures and videos. And now I can go, go back to this view. There I am. I can save this to my phone if I wanted to, because right now it's saved to the app, not the NVR, it's saved to the app. We can go to playback as well. We can do most everything that the NVR can. We need to add each device and what days I wanted to play back. Let's say I want to play back the 18th. There you go. Now I can go through here. There's Layla going through the door. That's mainly all the stuff you need to know within this app. Let's go over night footage, day footage, and finally go over my pros and cons. Starting off at my front door, I'm receiving an Amazon package, and the quality is pretty good. The audio is slightly delayed, but certainly not bad. 
and you can hear my crazy dog barking. Jumping to my balcony at night without the night mode on is still pretty good quality. You can see all the colors, you can see my crazy dog. Well, she's a sweet dog, but crazy. Now we are in my garage and here we are going to test out the spotlight. As soon as the spotlight turns on, it goes back to normal day color. And once you stand still for long enough, it turns back off, which is exactly what you'd expect. Now we are at the front of my garage. There's enough lights turned on that it doesn't need to use night mode. And the quality here is really good. You can easily see my license plate. Now jumping back to the balcony during night mode. And overall, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of each and every scene I showed. First, I wanna start with the pros. And the first biggest pro I have is the fact that I can scrub through footage. That is something that this Blink could not do, which only records five to 10 seconds at a time whenever it's notified with a notification. Due to the metal housing, the build is pretty high quality. It gives you the ability to power through ethernet, which I had to do. It has no monthly fee like the Blink, which is $10 a month. And for 12 months, that's $120, including the batteries that you have to keep replacing a couple times a year. These cameras have two-way audio, which is pretty good. And you can control that through the app. Another pro is that I can turn off the spotlight on the cameras individually. It comes with four 60-foot cables, which equals to 240 feet. The nighttime and daytime picture is pretty high quality. And I get phone notifications. Now the cons. The first con is that for some reason, on the external power connection, there's not a weatherproof sleeve. They have one on the ethernet side, they should all have one on the power supply side. Not sure why they did it, but okay. Not a huge issue, but the wiring that comes with the unit, it's a bit thinner compared to the wires in my house. That's not really a con, it still does the job perfectly. This one kind of gets me. The human and vehicle detection zones cannot be changed or disabled through the app. And the final issue is that you have to connect through an IP address through your web browser to turn off these lights. Ideally one, you should be able to do that on the NVR. And two, ideally everything should be on the guard view app. Everything. That's just a few things you gotta be okay with for buying a pretty cheap system. If you want the camera and or the tools, then I have them all linked down below for your convenience. That's one way to support this channel because they are affiliate links. My goal was to create this video in such a way that anybody could feel like they could do it. When I first started to do this project, I was a bit intimidated, so I researched as much as I possibly could and figured out everything I would want to know within one video. So hopefully this helps y'all out. This is Chris Automotive. I always appreciate and respect another. I'll see you next time. And thank you for watching the entire video.